Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to meet and discuss observability with you, uh, OSS Japan 2020, uh, 2022. I'm Kazaki Harada from NDT Communications. I joined SODA uh, TOC, Technical Oversight Committee, this April. And Sunil come from Huawei Technologies. Uh, he is also uh, the co-chair of the TOC. Uh, due to some last minutes travel changes, uh, Sunil could not join the, uh, uh, this session. So in fact, he is reaching Japan tomorrow. Uh, however, we will have the uh, we will have his video for his part. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, let's get started. Uh, Soda Foundation is an open source source project under the Linux Foundation that aims to foster an ecosystem of open source data management and storage software for data and autonomy. Uh, Soda Foundation offered a uh, natural forum for cross-project uh, collaboration and integration. Uh, Soda for, uh, fosters collaboration and innovation. Uh, providing quality end-to-end -end, uh, solution to both end users and storage vendors, uh, system integrators, uh, cloud providers, and consortium across different industries. Uh, Soda's vision is storage, uh, to storage and run uh, data anywhere. Uh, sorry, uh, store and to run any data anywhere. Uh, which uh, give end-to-end -end solution, uh, standard uh, interface, interoperability, autonomous uh, op operations, uh, dynamic data flows, and scalability. Uh, this figure shows the framework view of our open source platform. We call it Open Data Framework, ODF. The key proposition is uh, uh, the, it is entirely open source. It prevents vendor lock-in and connects uh, the data silos uh, like whatever we have seen, the data fragmentation uh, provides a unified interface and it is extensible. So we develop uh, in such a way uh, that it is more and more modules of the storage platform or third party clients, all these things are pluggable. Our mission is to build the standardization data and storage management standardization, uh, providing a single unified API and building the ecosystem of hardware, software, and solutions. The community and provide certification and future, uh, basically, uh, so that compliant compliance. Uh, SODA Foundation uh, work, uh, works with two categories of projects. Uh, first, uh, SODA Foundation directly and uh, part of the uh, core ODF. Second, uh, SODA Eco Project. These are data and storage related projects from the industry uh, which can join SODA. Uh, we work with these projects to build end-to-end -end solutions. This can help to avoid redundant work and fragmentation. These are the key SODA framework projects. Uh, Terra is a universal SDS controller uh, for connecting storage to Kubernetes, OpenStack, and VMware, VMware environment. Uh, Delphin provides a single unified view of storage performance for heterogeneous storage inf infrastructure. Uh, Storato uh, simplifies hybrid and multi-cloud solutions by using a single S3 compatible uh, interface to connect it to public cloud storage. Uh, Kafu is a new project to streamline data protection for Kubernetes 
and application data. Como is a newly proposed virtual data lake uh, project to provide seamless uh, access to data store in different clouds. Uh, these are the current list of SODA eco project. We welcome more eco project to SODA uh, so as to build end-to-end -end solutions for the users. The SODA eco project uh, program provides services to project to help them de develop, growing, and be uh, adapted by end users. It helps project join the SODA, uh, SODA ecosystem, uh, integrate with the SODA Open Data Framework, ODF, and introduce them to end user and the SODA community. Currently, uh, there are 10 eco projects. We welcome independent projects developed by individuals, companies, and some projects hosted by open source foundations uh, such as Linux Foundation, CNCF, Apache, etc., and industry organizations. Gartner predicts that by 2025, 85% uh, of organizations will run containers in production, up from less than 30% in 2020. Another industry reported, report predicts that 82% of the companies are building multi cloud, uh, multi -cloud strategies, and more than 78% companies have their depro uh, deployment in three or more public cloud. The, uh, this clearly confirms the trend, trend and direction. A key trend uh, towards smarter uh, infrastructure management is observability. In fact, observability is different from traditional monitoring, though Monitoring is a key aspect for observability. Uh, let us see the detail and contrasting points about monitoring and observability before we get into uh, cloud native observability. Uh, monitoring is collecting specific or predefined system information periodically. Monitoring allows the system to report alert when anomalies are detected and to take necessary action. However, uh, specific information is needed in advance to distinguish it from the malfunction. It always provides known unknown, means it provides known area hitting unknown values or thresholds. Observability is keeping what is happening, when, and where observable. Monitoring uh, has been based on the idea that uh, we can figure it out by looking into it after a problem has occurred. In other words, uh, it rely on expecting problems in advance, uh, such as predetermined uh, predetermine thresholds and set alert. On the other hand, observability became an, becomes an approach uh, that can explain and improve uh, what is happening now or what can happen based on the detailed data. So, we call get the real behavior of the system and build detailed insights into that. Hence, it can provide unknown unknowns. This can help to build smarter uh, system with higher intelligence. Uh, let me talk a little more about observability. 
uh, good observability is how well we can infer the internal state from uh, the, the output. Observability has three key pillars, metrics, logs, tracing. Metrics and logs are areas that have already been included in the monitoring. These three elements are considered the three pairs uh, because it is difficult to identify problems in increasingly complex cloud native architecture uh, through conventional monitoring alone. We cannot identify issues unless they are linked, linked to log and traces. It is essential to explore and vis visualize and uh, visualize the data, not as independent elements, but uh, by linking and uh, transforming them as needed. So observability uh, means detailed visibility into system using three types of data, uh, metrics, logs, and tracing, uh, traces uh, to determine the root cause, root cause of various, uh, various problems and to uh, improve system performance. Unlike a pro, uh, application developed uh, with conventional monstric system, application that involve multiple uh, microservice, uh, microservices with a single request uh, make it very difficult to identify and troubleshoot the processing uh, flow of each service and the uh, location of processing delays. Distributed tracing system uh, were created to solve this problem. Observability uh, uses this distributed processing technology to measure the performance of dynamic and complex system and to see how the system behavior in real time. So it helps in faster identification of issues and resolution. Uh, let us see why observability is so important. Uh, Cloud Native is largely uh, being adapted and uh, use of microservices, uh, serverless technologies, and container technologies. It, uh, technologies is expanding. Uh, tracing events in these systems to their origin uh, requires examining thousands of processes running in the cloud. On-premise, or both, uh, however, uh, tracing communication, path and interdependencies is uh, distributed architectures is not easy with traditional monitoring methods and tools. With observability, we can monitor mo uh, modern system more effectively to detect problems. Identify complex dependencies and trace them back to their, uh, their root cause. It also provides system administrators, IT operation analysts, and developers visibility into the entire uh, architecture. So let's uh, let me talk about uh, challenges, uh, observability challenges. Uh, the first is data sources are scattered. They reside in various uh, systems so, uh, throughout the organization. Uh, when these sys uh, these systems are siloed, not all organization member operates with the uh, same data. Uh, which present a difficulty for companies that make data-driven decisions. Second, the implementation of the observ observable system is mandatory. Many systems 
do not output observable information uh, which can incur system modern uh, modification cost. The next problem is uh, that there are too many tools. The output format and interfaces for data, data correction and analysis uh, vary from tool to tool, uh, making it difficult to collaborate. In addition, the amount of raw data being correct, uh, corrected is no way to store it all. Uh, finally, the data is unstructured. The format and complexity of the flowing data uh, vary from software and hardware. The software and hardware and change with each day's version upgrade. Keeping up with them uh, can be very costly. For effective end to end observability, we need SSOT, single uh, source of truth. SSOT is a centralized repository for all data uh, within the organization. By defining a single trusted source of information, uh, we can ensure that uh, everyone in the organization uh, makes, this, uh, makes uh, this decision based on the same data. Uh, to do this, uh, we must achieve the goal of establishing a unified interface and observability uh, to, to, uh, to, to host our organizes, organizational data. And not only that, but ideally uh, with appropriate AI and ML to reduce the cost of identifying problems and re uh, reacting to change. Samir will share what is the current state of container storage uh, observability and what are we uh, thinking at Soda Foundation. As I mentioned earlier, uh, he could not join in person. Let us listen to him uh, through his video. Hi everyone, uh, myself is Sanil Kumar. I am part of Soda Foundation uh, TOC co-chair. I am sorry I could not join in person uh, due to some last minute changes in my tickets uh, to Japan. Uh, in fact, I will be reaching Japan on Tuesday only. Yeah, let's continue uh, the session where uh, Bharatasan already mentioned about the importance of observability and key contrasting factors between monitoring and observability. Now in the remaining part, we will see what is the state and challenges and also the trends of uh, container storage observability and what we are thinking uh, at Soda Foundation and uh, what we have right now. Once again, thanks for joining the session. <clears throat> so cloud native project landscape, uh, uh, as you know, overall cloud native project landscapes uh, are growing exponentially. There are a lot of projects coming in for cloud native. So as in the case of uh, observability and analysis, uh, this is a key indication uh, what we can see uh, in the direction of uh, uh, this particular uh, area's trend. So like we heard from Haradasan, one of the backbone uh, aspects of uh, observability is monitoring. Uh, in cloud native uh, landscape, if you go, uh, this I have taken just from the uh, CNCF landscape. And I just extracted observability and analysis areas alone. So under that, monitoring has got so many of uh, these uh, projects. Uh, and it is increasing. There are new projects uh, getting added. 
like some of the important products uh, projects you can see open metrics thanos uh, and so on and so forth so there are, there are many projects in cloud native monitoring and similarly for logging i think fluentd and uh, grafana lobby all these projects are uh, very popular and uh, apart from logging tracing also you have uh, uh, some projects in and chaos engineering is uh, one of the new areas where uh, error injection and failure detection those kind of things uh, are dealt in uh, chaos engineering there are, it's a new area but there are many projects coming in some of the important projects like litmus uh, litmus chaos and all these things are there and then there are projects for uh, observability and analysis area for continuous optimization on the uh, data journey and uh, visualization part so what this indicate is primarily there are large number of projects uh, in this area uh, both open source and uh, proprietary so this also indicates or adds to what radhasan mentioned it's critical and let us see what's available in csi as you know csi is the primary interface storage interface for uh, cloud uh, native solution or container storage interface so kubernetes uh, or mesos cloud foundry th those kind of uh, container orchestration engines uses uh, csi to talk to storage now csi has certain uh, monitoring aspects available like pv matrix uh, and the primary events uh, from the pv but uh, on the storage side on the pool side uh, you you may not find too many uh, uh, monitoring uh, attributes uh, already available in csi so that that that's in the case of csi now what cloud vendors are you providing so uh, because this is a trend uh, important trend so cloud vendors are also started providing monitoring and observability solutions like aws gcp and sorry uh, azure they are providing different solutions and also they try to integrate with open source tools like prometheus grafana uh, shaker open open search etc uh, so some of the examples I have given on the left hand side, like Azure Monitor supports Azure Blob Storage Monitoring, AWS CloudWatch, all these things are available. So what's happening in the case of say storage vendors? So storage vendors, if you see storage vendors uh, trend, they are also trying to provide a logical solution along with open source or some kind of uh, partner software, something like. Uh, uh, monitoring multi-cloud container storage with Fortworks and Datadog, Dell Container Storage Module, CSM. CSM is primarily for uh, observability under Karavi project. I think Karavi project is uh, recently renamed. And IBM uh, Turbonomic uh, Cube Turbo. Uh, that is also towards AI ops and management. Yeah, one important point I think Radhasan also mentioned maybe that observability is one of the key uh, aspects of end-to-end -end AIOps. And there are a lot of uh, top vendors supporting CSI plugins and metrics through uh, CSI for Kubernetes storage. And there are research uh, happening like pluggable storage metrics engine uh, for observability, benchmarking for observability, etc. So we could see a lot of research happening in this area. So what the, the summary is that there are many tools, solutions, and research happening. It's complex, distributed and dynamic application deployments on container environments because why this becomes important and complex is that most of the deployment, application deployments are distributed and dynamic. And we are talking about, we started talking about application aware storage performance. Uh, and there are too many tools so there, there is a obvious uh, fragmentation happening and limited observability support from CSI that we have already seen. CSI team is also, TAG is also working on that. Uh, hopefully we get more 
uh, features out there in CSI for monitoring your observability. And the storages, what we are talking about, uh, are becoming more of heterogeneous storage. That's what the user wants. And then we need to support hybrid kind of monitoring, hybrid uh, uh, means uh, across cloud edge and on-premise. And there needs to be proper integration of AI ML with observability. And uh, the legacy storages are not designed for a uh, kind of an observable system. We have seen what is how to make observable systems. And varied system information is needed. It's not just uh, performance. Uh, we need to get resource information, alert information, and uh, we need huge size of data. Uh, so the insights of the state of the system, we need to get then only we can uh, get an end to end observable uh, information uh, to uh, identify what are the unknown uh, issues that can crop up and take actions accordingly. So, so uh, you have uh, uh, the trend on this area. Uh, cloud vendors, CSI, or such kind of open source uh, platforms or storage vendors, they're all working, all researchers, they're working on to find better solutions on this. So there are challenges and at the same time opportunities. So container storage observability is the summary is that it's critical. Research, everything is happening. Uh, there is a huge business potential and opportunities going forward. Uh, uh, that's why everyone is. Uh, trying to find out uh, solutions on this. So coming to uh, sort of foundation, what are we doing uh, for building Kubernetes native observability? So primarily heterogeneous storage to container observability for Kubernetes at sort of foundation. That's what we are trying to do because we already have a project called Delphin on heterogeneous storage monitoring. Uh, and now we started working towards uh, bringing this to Kubernetes and then uh, take it forward towards uh, observability. That's our idea. We'll just see uh, what is Delphin and what we're trying to do. So SODA Delphin, a monitoring framework, uh, primarily catered to resource monitoring, uh, like storage pool, volume, uh, port, network controllers, file system, share information, mapping views, etc. Then performance monitoring, like bandwidth, uh, throughput, IOPS, uh, then alert management. Uh, then we also have a driver manager so that you can seamlessly add new device models or storage models uh, to the framework. And then you have a plugin model. The plugin model, uh, why plugin is important because currently out of the box, we support Prometheus. Uh, and uh, Prometheus database can be used for all the export data from the drivers, each of the drivers. And then from there, you can connect to Kafka, sorry, uh, Grafana for visualization. And Kafka can be another plugin to get these exported data and do your AIML on, on top of it. So the driver manager supports easy integration of the driver and plugin manager uh, supports uh, easy integration of third party a database visualization or maybe some kind of analytics on top of it. So currently this is heterogeneous storage monitoring on kind of an enterprise or on premise. So you can have different kind of storage models like from different vendors like NetApp, Tele EMC, Huawei or different organizations. And you can have platform on top of it any kind of data management platform, wherein Delphin can plug in in between. It provides REST APIs uh, to connect to the third party platform, or you can even use custom uh, export uh, plugins uh, to get access to this uh, REST API and get all the data. And then you can uh, connect to any of the storage models on the south side to get resource performance and alert information. So this is again, what just I mentioned about uh, it's REST based. 
and we have different services it's kind of microservice uh, based architecture so it's very easy to deploy and that's how it is helping us to deploy in kubernetes as well uh, so it is written in python and it provides uh, agentless and less intrusive kind of uh, model uh, it's primarily working in control plane and it's completely uh, open source vendor neutral and secure deployments uh, like i mentioned it provides uh, pluggable drivers uh, and uh, exporters the exporter framework will help to connect to different uh, kind of uh, third party clients and Devon provides performance scaling with dynamic process creation uh, depending on the number of storage managed by Delphin. So even if you increase the uh, storages below, it can actually do a performance scaling uh, by adding more process to handle uh, the load. So we are continuously improving by doing some kind of benchmarks. So if you're interested on using a Delphin in enterprise, for heterogeneous storage, please feel free to connect with us in GitHub or Slack. I will give those coordinates in the later slides. So these are some demos. Uh, so one, the first demo is primarily on registration of the uh, driver. So you have a we have a dashboard, custom dashboard. You can also change the dashboard. You can connect any of the custom dashboard for that. So you can register first. You register that uh, uh, driver or the storage model. Uh, so in the interest of time, I'll just uh, go fast. Maybe this demo, you can see it later as well. Sorry. So if you see, I just show you the last part. So these are kind of the dashboard it provides, the capacity alerts and performance uh, monitoring. This is one part of it. And then I will show you in the next demo uh, some more uh, details. Uh, this is primarily the earlier we saw the resource and capacity, I mean, alert part. This part we will see the performance uh, monitoring data. So it captures, you can actually schedule, you can actually have the interval on which interval you need to read. And you also have a mechanism to sync the data uh, from the storage and the database. Uh, so that you have the real-time data available, the latest data available at the point in time. And the same data can be exported uh, to do your insights as well. And we also have some examples available uh, in the example repository of a sort of foundation. Uh, this is something like an experiment which we have done that whether Delphin can run in Kubernetes as a workload. So this we have already done. So that gives us some more confidence that uh, we can adapt this for Kubernetes because we already have the microservice kind of an architecture. So it's it, it will help us to easily migrate. And we have some idea. I will explain what we are thinking, how to uh, make it native to uh, Kubernetes. And the example uh, repo has other uh, uh, examples as well that how you can read performance, how you can connect to Prometheus and Kafka and things like that. So if you're interested, you can connect to a uh, sort of foundation.io slash Slack and connect with us. So cloud native observability, our idea is that you just, uh, we want, we would like to take Delphin towards uh, Kubernetes as a native solution. So more likely our thinking is that we uh, deploy kind of an operator model uh, through which we can actually have CRDs and controllers. So CRD will, uh, this, this model will provide you uh, native Kubernetes uh, extension to the API. So we'll have APIs for this Delphin. Uh, and then on the south side, we will have some kind of an extensions uh, to the CSI. That's what we are currently thinking, that we can do an extension to CSI uh, to get the uh, additional capabilities what we have it in uh, Delphin. Or we may have to have some kind of sidecars, uh, kind of a driver uh, separately. Uh, along with the CSI drivers of the vendors. Uh, but we prefer that we can just have the CSI vendor and the extension so that it will be very easy to scale. And on the north side, it will be almost like same because it can, this exporter framework, what we have can be 
uh, utilized there itself so that it can connect to Prometheus, Grafana or Kafka AML or any third party clients within uh, the Kubernetes deployment. So this is what we are thinking. So we just started thinking about some of the proposals and design. So this is the right time uh, for you to join uh, this open source project and we can collectively work towards the solution. And this will be vendor agnostic uh, and even platform agnostic if uh, it supports uh, CSI. So these are some of the use cases uh, we can think of. Heterogeneous container storage observability, unified visualization, unified storage analysis, predictive analysis and preventive actions, and hybrid observability across cloud, edge, and on-premise because we have a cloud monitoring part also considering once we have the basic uh, monitoring or adaptation of Delphi and Kubernetes. And of course, it will support end-to-end -end AI ops. And uh, yeah, some of the key highlights would be on the architecture or the deployment is cloud native ready, microservice, and multiple CSI driver instances possible, exporters, agent model for capability extensions, and it can be unified across heterogeneous uh, storage vendors. Uh, there are future uh, potential areas like federation support, real-time performance, cloud observability, like I mentioned, and edge, distributor observability, and tools marketplace, like you can add on, we can have a marketplace where uh, this observability tools can be there, which can be just download and uh, use it along with the framework. So these are some of the things we are thinking uh, these are our thoughts uh, on cloud native observability uh, at sort of foundation and uh, please join us. This is the right time to collaborate or now is the right time and uh, we can collectively work and we also work with CNCF and Linux Foundation uh, to not to duplicate uh, uh, the work. So what we understand is that they are primarily focusing on the data protection right now. So we can actually complement the monitoring and then uh, uh, probably we can have good solutions uh, for CSI or uh, extensions to it. Uh, that's all from uh, our side today. Thank you for joining us and uh, uh, have a nice day and enjoy the conference. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hi, thank you, Sunny uh, uh Thank you for joining us our, our session. Uh, that is. Uh, do you have any question? Okay. Okay. Uh, again, uh, thank you for uh, uh, your joining our session.